Hello, I'm Shen and you're watching XDA TV. This is my first video in quite a bit because I've been busy with my January exams, but now that they're over, I should be back to my normal schedule. So on some recent news, Koch has released Clockwork Mod's Touch Recoveries. It's supported on various devices. You can download them for free from his site, or you could pay a premium license and download it from ROM Manager. The first Humble Bundle for Android is out. The games are compatible with Windows, Linux, OS X, and Android. The package is worth around $60, and you can get it for whatever you want. However, to get World of Goo, you must pay above the average price, which is around 5 or $6. Google no longer considered CDMA devices as developed devices. This includes the Galaxy Nexus, Nexus S and the Zoom. It's most likely due to Verizon not allowing the closed source binaries to be released. A video of the HTC Veal was leaked onto the internet. It was running a very early build of Sense 4.0. The leaker has probably been fired by now and is in the middle of getting sued, most likely. He was actually stupid enough to go onto the page where it showed his IMEI, device serial number and his phone number. I mean, if you're going to leak something, at least do it properly, or good luck paying the legal fees while being unemployed. More HTC news, they have released HTC Elevate, which is a new online community. It's strictly for their regular customers, so nothing about development talk. However, they are planning to release beta test ROMs on the site. If you want to sign up, I'll post the invite link down below. Now onto the development section of this video. This week, I'll be showing you how to root Android phones that have fast boot. For people who followed my last video on how to compile an ICS ROM, this will show you how to get root on it. But do note, this guide does require you to have a phone with an unlocked bootloader already. So let's start learning what root actually means. When you root a phone, you're giving it the ability to gain super user access, which allows you to edit read-only files. On Android, there's an app called Super User by ChainsDD, which allows you to control which apps are allowed to gain super user permission, as a malware with super user access can do a lot of damage. Worst case scenario, it could steal all your data, including passwords, and then brick your phone. A rooted phone is essentially a phone that's running a ROM that has the SU binary installed. So you've got a new phone, you don't want to flash any custom ROMs, and you just want root access. First, you'll need to unlock your bootloader. To unlock your bootloader, there are different ways to do it. For HCC phones, you can unlock them using HCC dev. Now you want to download Fastboot and ADB, and download the drivers for your phone. If the drivers don't work, you can try downloading the Android SDK and you can force device manager to use the Google drivers. This usually works for me. Getting the drivers to work is very time consuming and it can get very stressful. Now you need to download an unsecured boot image. What an unsecured boot image does is allow you to use ADB remount which remounts the system partition to read and write allowing you to push the SU binary. If it's a new phone and you can't find one you'll have to make it yourself. To make an unsecured boot image you will need to find a dump of the stock ROM and extract the boot.img file. Now you'll need to unpack it. I'll link a written tutorial down below because it's different across Linux, OS X and Windows. When you unpack the boot image you want to open default.prop and change the ro.secure value to zero. Now save and repack the boot.img. Once it's been repacked you want to copy it to the fastboot directory. Now you want to boot your phone into bootloader. You can do this using the adb command adb reboot bootloader. On most phones including HTC phones you want to pull out the battery, pull it back in, hold down the volume down button and power it on. Now plug in your USB and it should be in fast boot mode. Connect your phone to your PC, type in fast boot, boot, boot.img. This will now boot your phone into the unsecured bootloader without flashing it. When your phone is booted, you'll want to download the SU binary from down below, extract it to your ADB folder and then run the following commands. ADB remount, ADB push, SU slash system slash bin slash ADB shell chmod 06755 slash system slash bin slash SU. That will push the SU binary into the correct place and set the correct permissions. Then you want to go to the Android market and download Super User. Reboot your phone and you'll be booted into a rooted stock ROM. If you want to flash the unsecured boot image, go back to the bootloader and type fastboot flash boot boot.img. If you want to root an update zip package, you will have to add the SU binary to system slash bin. You might have to add permissions to the update script as well. If your phone's bootloader doesn't support fastboot and supports something else, such as Samsung's download menu, you'll just have to boot or flash an unsecured kernel and you'll be able to use ADB remount to push the SU binary into the phone. So that's it. You'll have rooted your stock ROM without needing to flash a custom ROM. On a side note, if you would like me to do a video guide on anything else, post down below and I'll check 
check it out. Another thing, any Dropbox users out there, if you want an extra five gigs of storage, go and check out their beta app and it'll automatically add five gigs to your account. Um, I think that's all. I hope this episode of XCA TV has been helpful. I'll post all the links down below as usual and I'll see you next time.